the next problem I'm going to talk about and illustrate dynamic programming is a problem that's from biology again it's the RNA secondary structure problem this is a problem of predicting predicting the RNA secondary structure from what we call the primary sequence I will not talk much biology here I will very soon I will suck the biology out of the problem completely and we talk about it as, as an algorithmic problem but for those of you who are curious, uh, DNA is a sequence of ACTG, right? The nucleotides are ACTG. When we talk about RNA, it's a sequence of ACUG, okay? The four letters are ACUG. It doesn't have T in RNA. It has U. Uh, DNA is, there's the famous double helix structure of DNA. It's double helix, right? So we have two copies or two strands of DNA. This is for DNA. RNA is just one strand, RNA is single-stranded, most RNA. And because it is single-stranded, one of the interesting things that RNA does in the cell is that it folds onto itself. So it folds onto itself, it forms loops and stuff like that. So, so what I mean by it folds itself, so if this was the sequence from position 1, 2, 3, whatever, all the way to 500, this becomes 1, 2, 3, all the way like this. And this is position 500 here. Okay, so it falls and forms these kind of, of loops here and uh, all other terms, hairpins and so on. Okay, and the RNA secondary structure problem is that we want to go from this sequence. Someone gives you a sequence like ACC, UACC, you know, G and say, okay, this is the input. They say the output, I want, you know, the output is... I want this, uh, you know, secondary structure and so on, okay? So this is the RNA secondary structure problem. And we cannot talk, I don't cannot talk about biology and chemistry anymore. We need to move into the actual problem. And the problem we talk about to illustrate dynamic programming is really a bit simplified as well from the actual biological problem. So what is the problem that we deal with in the RNA secondary uh, structure problem? So we have a string we have string B of RNA, so B1, B2, B3, all the way to Bn. So these Bi's are in A, C, U, G. This is the alphabet, okay? So each Bi here is one of these four letters. So we have a string over this alphabet, uh, over this alphabet A, C, U, G. Secondary structure, what is the secondary structure? How do we define se secondary structure mathematically? is what we want, so this is the input, the output. It's a set S of pairs IJ such that you know, I and J are between 1 and N. I is always smaller than J in this case, and the IJ is more but it has a lot of constraints on it, okay? So every pair here, every pair ij in S must satisfy a few conditions. One is that this ai and whatever, so the B i and B j, B i and B j. So the the letters whose indices are a i and j, are both of them are either in a u, or B i B j, in C g. Okay. So if you give me pair two seven, then the letters at positions two seven must be either one of them is a, the other is u or one of them is C, the other is G. It can, you cannot give me a pair such that one of them is A and the other is G, okay? This is known as, this is about complementarity here. So when, when RNA folds, you cannot match A with G or, or fold A onto G or U onto C or anything like that. So this is one of the conditions here. The second thing is that I and G have to be, I cannot fold in such a way that position two and position three now map together because think about it that you have a line and you want to now loop it so that uh, that points two and point three match together in some sense you create that sharp angle 
that could create uh, that could break that line okay i'm just using here analogy so what we say in rna that we don't want any sharp turns so if i g r n s i must be smaller than or equal to g minus four so these i and g must be separated by at, at least four positions so you cannot give me i is two and g is four, is, is three you cannot give me i is two i is two and and g is is five if you give me i is two g must be at least uh yeah g must be at least five sorry if i sorry at least six six or seven and so on okay so i must be smaller than g minus four okay remember that i is smaller than g and the sec the third one of course when we do this matching is no base pair appears in more in more than one pair so i for example if you give me i and g no so okay this is not about every pair here it's not about every pair so this is about every pair of i g now we go if if i j and k l are in s both of them are in s then it must be that i j and k l is empty okay the intersection of these two is empty you cannot use i more than once in the solution you cannot use j more than once or k or l or anything like that okay and the the last uh, thing the last condition here about them is that if i and j and k and l are in the solution in these two pairs then we can't have we cannot sorry then doesn't make any sense then it can't be that i smaller than k smaller than j smaller than l okay so if you if i give you an, an rna sequence and you tell me that this pair maps together i and j you cannot give me another pair that will overlap you cannot give me something like this k and l this is not good this is good i j here k l here this is fine and this is fine as well i j and k l okay this is fine as well but the other one where they are interleaved this is not good okay so we have these four conditions i want the output to be a set of pairs and every pair i and j must satisfy this condition here that either the two are a and u or, or c and g i must be smaller than j minus four and the same index in the letter cannot be used in more than one pair and we cannot have these crossing pairs and one thing that i haven't said so far if you look at this problem actually this is an interesting point to raise even though i should have written it there but if you look at this and i someone gives me you know, the input a sequence and say give me a solution to this problem this is an, a very easy problem you can have an o of one algorithm to solve it by returning the empty set the empty set satisfies all these requirements what makes this problem hard is that we are looking for s we are looking for s with maximum size okay so we want the largest set s possible that satisfies these okay so you cannot give me just the empty set so this is our problem we want to to find the solution to to this problem and now we need to think to reason about it we need to reason about it uh, recursively and here's how we are going to reason about it uh, remember that i have the rna sequence here all the way from one to n but i will now look at i will index my solution or my my uh, recursive solution by i and j uh, opt i j is going to be the solution on the string from letter i to letter g okay so i will be looking at them like this at the end of course what i need to return is opt one n okay so i will be looking at a segment here from i to g and i will start expanding this out until i get all the way to to n uh, but 
I want to now opt IG is the the size of S. Okay, so the maximum number of pairs that satisfy the conditions on the string on the string bi bi1 plus 1 all the way to bg okay and again this is at the end what we want to return and now we need to reason about about uh, about this opt of ig we need to reason about it recursively okay so let's look at it recursively now and here are my letters So this is letter G, this is G minus one, and this is I, and so on, okay? So now the question is, I'm, I'm gonna focus on this letter G, and I'll say, is it part of a solution? What does it mean to be part of a solution is that does S have a pair, one of the elements is G, right? I mean, G is at the end, so it must be the, the, the element on the right, and there is some other element T here that goes with it. So we are saying, does G, pair with some other element between i and j minus 1 that uh, that is part of a solution and now let's reason about it as we said as we have been seeing so far in all the examples the answer is not yes the answer is not no the answer is to evaluate both scenarios both scenarios if they are possible if they are feasible to evaluate both of them and take the best of the two okay so we have two scenarios here one is one scenario is g is not part of any pair of any pair in the solution on b i to b g okay so if we say g is not is not in a solution then what is opt of ig if opt of ig is the number is the maximum number of pairs that where the indices are from i to g and we say g is not involved then our solution must if g is not involved then our solution must be somewhere here which is opt of i g minus one so if 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 g is not then opt of ig is nothing but opt of i j minus one right now what if what happens if j can be part of the solution so if j is part of the solution let me again draw it again here or five six seven eight nine ten whatever so if j is part of the solution and this is i it must map with something right it must map with some it is part of a solution on the letters from i to j okay so i'm not i'm ignoring everything before i i'm ignoring everything after j so it must match with something here okay so this is a pair let's call this t so what we are saying is that the pair t j is in the solution if t j is not in the is is in the solution then opt of i j opt of ij for sure has one one element in it right i mean it has one because there's at least one pair in s which is the pair tj plus now where what else we can where can we now apply the solution because of the non-crossing condition that i cannot i cannot have a situation like this i cannot have for example something like this right because we cannot have this sorry now we need to look for solutions we need to look for solutions before t somewhere here and we need to look for solutions here as well because if i look at pairs that are formed from here they are not gonna intersect or cross tj if i look for pairs here they are not gonna overlap with the tj pair okay and remember this is a cartoon here when i say when i have just four squares there please don't think about it just four because that already violates some condition okay but imagine that there's enough sufficient squares here sufficient squares here so if if ig if tg is part of a solution then opt ig has already one
one because of that pair TJ. Plus, I need to look for the solution from I to T minus one. And I need to look for, this is region one here. This is region one. And I need to look for solutions in region two, which is opt of T plus one, J minus one. So this is basically what we have here. We have this option that J is part of the solution and this will be opt IJ. And we have this, which is opt, uh, J is not part of the solution. And we take the max of these two, okay? We take the max of these two. This is, it's as simple as that. Of course, you know, for J to be part of the solution and J and T uh, form a pair, then T must be smaller than J minus four, and T and J, B T and B J must be either A U or C G and so on, right? So that this must be conditions in the pseudo code, and this is, you know, if I want to write the pseudo code now, basically, what we have now, and bas basically we initialize initialize you know this matrix opt okay i don't want to keep just using a but matrix opt this is matrix now zero for every uh whenever i greater than j minus four initialize it to zero because we cannot have this these pair together now because i and j must be separated by at least uh, four elements we can now say for k equal five to n minus one and four i equals one two n minus k so this is actually these two loops are forcing me not to take i and j that are too close to each other i can take j to be i plus k and now i can say opt of i j is again the maximum of these two scenarios. One is J is not part of the solution, in which case let me look for opt between I and J minus one, or T is part, uh, J is part of the solution, in which case let me look for, I add one plus a solution from I to T minus one plus opt of T plus one to j minus one and of course this here for this condition we have to have the t has to be between i and j smaller than j of course and greater than i and of course b b j and b t have to be either in a u or b j b t R N C G. Okay, and of course T and G have to be separated uh, by at least four letters. So this is the algorithm. Okay, and then at the end we return opt at position one and n. Okay, so this is the dynamic programming algorithm. Again, if you implement this recursively, it's going to lead to a blow up. If you implement it like this you will get an efficient algorithm. Here, notice that this is O of N, right? And this is O of N. But you have to be careful here. This one is not O of 1 now, because look at the T. The T can can uh, vary between I and J, okay? The T can vary between I and J uh, because we are looking for it, okay? So this is not O of 1 here. It is O of N as well. So we have three nested loops, each of which can take, in the worst case, O of n. Therefore, we have O of n cubed here. Okay? So this is the dynamic programming for RNA secondary structure. And once again, we are always reasoning in the same way. We are trying, we, we, we first, we have to look at some sort of an order. Okay? We some sort of an order. When we look at the compatible, weighted compatible intervals, we sorted them by their finish time. When we looked at the longest increasing subsequence, again, the sequence itself is already sorted, and we look at one element. 
when we looked at all pairs shortest path, remember that we had to, to assume that the nodes are numbered 1, 2, 3, all the way to n, and that allowed us to look at you know, subsets or subsequences of these, of these nodes from 1 to k. When we looked at longest common subsequence, it's the same thing. The two sequences have their natural order, like the letters are already ordered. Here it's the same thing, and we always ask a question about, let me reason about an element. Is it part of the solution or is it not part of the solution? The answer is not yes, the answer is not no. We evaluate both, and we take the one that results in a better solution. Okay, Better as n gives rise to a better optimality. Okay, and the same thing here, if I want to look at the RNA secondary structure, and if I want to get the RNA secondary structure itself, I have to do trace back on this, and I leave that to you as an exercise, or you can find it in books, okay? This is not a, a big deal, but even if you find it in books, you should not just say, oh, okay, it's in a book. The, what, what, the reason you need to, to, to figure it out is because you should be able to figure out also the trace back algorithm for finding the solution because the solution the problem here was not talking about what is the maximum number of of pairs it was talking about the set of pairs so i want the set of pairs themselves not just the value in dynamic programming we always define the the function the recursive function and the recursive formula in terms of the optimality criterion but when we need to get the actual elements of the solution we have to do the trace back